Last week, I started with the question, how does a person tap into the power of God? Or how can a person become someone that God uses? And to answer that question, last week we observed the life of Joshua. We looked at the people of Israel who uh, provided some practical steps for us to consider. If we, go in, we went into Joshua 3 and we found a group of Hebrews were standing at the east side of the Jordan River and they wanted to cross over. However, the river was at flood stage, which made crossing impossible. They were facing a moment of decision. They could see it as impossible and give up, or they could trust God and go forward. And so I entitled the devotional last week, Tapping into the Power of God, and that was the first point. And I'd like to take you into part two this week. You see, we know from history, from God's word, that the children of Israel did go forward. They went through the River Jordan and out on the other side. What, what we want this devotional to accomplish is that you and I will take some of these simple and timeless principles and allow them to influence the, our life so that we can live an empowered life, a life that God uses, a life that's tapped into the power of God. And last week I shared a quote with you from Alan Redpath about this passage in Joshua. And he says this, and I quote, This is a momentous event in the history of the children of Israel. The crossing of the Jordan does not illustrate the passing of a soul into eternity, but rather it illustrates the passing of a Christian from one level of Christian life to another. It marks the end of the self-life and the beginning of the Christ life. The end of a life lived on the principle of effort and the beginning of a life lived on the principle of faith and obedience. And last week we learned that if you want to tap into the power of God, you must follow the Lord's lead. We learn that from what was said in Joshua 3, verse 3. The Israelites are standing on the bank, wanting to cross over, and Joshua says this to them in verse 3. As soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. The first thing they had to do was follow the Lord's lead. And they were not to move until the ark, the symbol of God's present, moved first. Today I want us to consider a second ingredient that comes along with when, when someone wants to tap into the power of God, wants to be able to be used by God, and it is simply this. Prepare yourself spiritually. You know, it actually says in the next verse to consecrate yourself. Listen to what Joshua says in verse 4. Uh, verse 5, then the, he says to the people, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And he was speaking about the things that were going to take place the next day and forward. You know, we don't use the word consecrate much anymore. When something is consecrated, it meant that it was purified or set apart for a sacred use. Today, we might say that it means to be spiritually prepared. You see, God will not use us until we're ready to be used. And being consecrated before the Lord, well, there, it involves at least a few things. Number, number one, it means that we turn away from sinful behaviors. It, we're not only recognizing that what we're doing is wrong, it's being truly repentant, which is more than being simply sorry. It means we make the changes necessary to stop wrong behavior. We turn away from sinful behavior. The second thing we need to do is to adopt a godly attitude. We have to be teachable and humble before the Lord. Live an obedient life. The person set apart for God does what God says in his word. We start by being obedient in the little things of life, such as honesty and integrity and humility, love, respect, reverence. There's examples of this in our day-to-day -day life. For example, we have a musician who will never play with an orchestra until they can master their scales. An athlete will never be a starter until they master the fundamentals. A student will never become a doctor until they're able to grasp anatomy and physics and, and, and biology and more. One will never be a renowned chemist until they can master and understand the periodic table. It's the same thing in the Christian life. You cannot do great things for God until you have first consecrated your life, until you become serious about following Christ. Sad to say, but the church is filled with counterfeit believers. People, they, they know the lingo, they participate in the things of the church, 
They become churchified, but they're not serious about following Christ. And as a result, it's difficult for these people to know when God's directing them to stop or to wait or whether he's telling them to move forward. So the person who's greatly used by God is the one who is serious about their commitment to the Lord. Their faith is not a compartment of their life. Their relationship with Christ is what feeds and drives the rest of the life, their life. So let's follow the challenge that Joshua gave to the people of Israel. Let's constant, concentrate ourselves. <laughs> should concentrate too, but consecrate ourselves. Remember that the end result that Joshua gave to the people is that the Lord would do wonders among them. So I'll say it again. You cannot do great things for God until you have first consecrated your life, until you become serious about following Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, it's a very short verse with a very tall order, a challenge, a call, uh, even a, a direct forward command, that it sounds like, from Joshua to the people of Israel, but yet to us today as we read the passage, to consecrate ourselves, to set ourselves apart unto you, to avoid sinful behavior, to walk in obedience and have an attitude that's pleasing to you. So God, help us. Help us to be that. We want to plug in, tap into your power. We want to be used by you. So Lord, we know that one, we have to follow your lead, and number two, we need to consecrate ourselves. Give us the desire to do that and to, to walk closely by your side, obedient to your word, faithful to your call. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.